Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello, and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. Today, we are on our final part, part three of our common parenting mistakes with New Zealand super nanny, Jessie Wilsons. And if you don't know, if you have missed the previous, previous installments, then I will pop the link in the show notes so you can go and start from the beginning. So let's get into it. Welcome, Jessie. Thanks for having me again, Amy. Excited uh, to be here. Oh, yes, I'm excited to wrap this up. I can't believe it's part three already. So um, just before we get into part three, which is the mistakes that parents make based on their own nature. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, I thought we could go over just briefly what the other two parts are about, and then we'll go straight into it. Yeah, sure. So the first, the first session we had was about general mistakes that parents make unintentionally. Things like not recognising their child's nature, um, not dodging darts. Um, and the second session was about parents, mistakes that parents um, make for each different nature. So again, that's not recognising the child's nature. And today we're talking about mistakes parents make due to their own nature. So this is exciting. This is, this is untouched territory for me because... My book that I mentioned, I have it right here, The Nature of Children. This is about the four natures of children. Um, but we, as parents, as adults, we have a nature as well. So as I've been helping families, I've been recognising that it's not just the kids that have these needs that need to be met, it's the parents as well. And also, mm. because the parents are a certain nature, they are parenting true to their nature. And if they're not parenting the same natured child, it can, it can be a bit of a disadvantage if they overdo it. You'll understand more yeah. as I talk. And I think more, um, if people have listened to the previous two installments of this, they'll probably have noticed their own nature in what, how you've described Absolutely. the children and everything beforehand. So this will be really interesting and really helpful to get to know you a little bit more. As, Absolutely, and yeah. even for people with um, that don't have children, that have a spouse that is a different nature to them, they will be operating due to their own tendency, and it may be too overwhelming for the way that the spouse likes to do things. So it's just interesting to be aware of our own tendencies and how we do things. Of yeah. course, we're just doing them because that's who we are. And these mistakes are actually all qualities. They're the flip side of a quality. So, for example, a social has a quality of um, ideas. But when you have too many ideas, that can actually result in not being very helpful because you've got way too many ideas and you're doing too much. So as I go, I'm talking about mistakes, but they're actually the flip side of a, of a quality. So let's get stuck in. We'll start with the social natured parent. This is me. I'm a social. <laughs> I love talking about socials. Uh, we are the spontaneous, buoyant, busy, um, fun loving, love to play games, lots of ideas, always talking. That's us. A mistake that social parents can make is they can have a bit of a lack of follow through. Um, they have all these ideas. And they love starting projects, love starting things, new and novelty. And they start it and they start it and then something else comes up and they start a new project, start a new project. So they can lack follow through. They also can over promise and under deliver. Same sort of scenario. Um, when, I was, when I was fostering, I remember I'd be driving to school and it'd be a sunny day and I'd just think, oh, it'd be a nice day for the beach. And I'd say, oh, we could go to the beach today. Because it was just an idea that came into my head. Yeah. Um, and I always just did that too much and obviously something came up and we couldn't go to the beach and my little guy was a bit disappointed and I had to really think oh I've got to stop saying things and the reason I'd say it was because I, I, I'm motivated by my ha having 
making people happy. So you've got these ideas and you think, oh, that'll make them happy. That's exciting. I'll say it. You've got to be really careful that you can follow through on it. Mm. Um, so the other, the other problem is social sometimes give in too easily because they want kids to be happy. They want everyone to be happy. So, so you might say, um, right, you know, as a consequence, you're going to lose your screen, for, screen time for the rest of the day and then it might come to dinner time and you might forget about that consequence and you just want the kids to be happy and you want some space yourself. So, you, oh, that's fine, you can have it. So that sort of lack of follow through is, is quite common in social natured parents. Um, the, the solution is to, first of all, think things through. Slow down a little bit before you blurt out all your fun ideas and plans. Don't take on too much. Before you say yes to something, something new, think about what you've already got going on and think about what is a priority, what is on your plate that's a priority. And tell yourself, when I get that priority done, I'm going to allow myself to start this new thing. It's a great motivator yeah. to finish one thing is when you know you can start something you've been really looking forward to. Um, and get comfortable with people being unhappy with you. So making decisions and giving out consequences can sometimes upset people. We don't like people being upset and sad. It's quite heavy for us. We just want everyone to be happy. Um, but it really does do your parenting a disservice if, if, you're, if you're uncomfortable making decisions yeah. that need to be made. I have a little bit of an example. I'm just thinking mm. back to um, when I was younger, I was a very picky eater. And my mm -hmm. mum would try me with something and then she'd try me with something else and something else and something else. And she would run herself ragged just trying to get me to eat something. And then I'd go eventually back to the, the one I wanted in the first place and she'd just be pulling her hair out. Yeah. Uh, are social parents more likely to be that kind of pleaser when, for example, yep. getting their the kids to Definitely, eat? Definitely, because they, we have so many ideas. So if you, you know, if you didn't like a boiled egg, we'd be like, well, I can fry one for you. Well, I can put one in here. Maybe I could do this because we've just got all these ideas. Mm. But if we just slow down... And, you know, in, in, in terms of eating, sensitive nature, children have a sensitive palate. They don't like to do things. They don't like things with lumps in them. They don't. So I take a step terrible. back and understand what, you know, what is it? What, what nature is my child? I get that a lot. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Mm. Um, and, yeah, eating. We could do another whole topic on eating, but children tend to not. Children tend to eat when they're hungry. It's a funny thing. And a lot of parents worry that they're going to starve, but they won't. They'll eat when they're hungry. Anyway, yeah. I diverse. It's a good example. Um, let's move on to the strong-natured parent. These are our delegators. These are our fast-moving activators. These are our doers. These are the parents that get the job done. They're very fast-moving. They want to take action and... A problem can arise when they are actually moving too quickly for everyone else. Right. Uh, they're very quick to see what needs to happen and, and make it happen. That's their gift. Um, but sometimes it can be too quick for everybody else. They also react very quickly before listening. So if a child is um, telling a story about something, they will already have the answer. They will already see the mistake and what they need to do and they will butt in and say, well, that's because you did it. And the child is left kind of going, oh, well, yeah, well, I, I did that. Listen, you didn't listen to me. You didn't hear the rest of the story. The child is left feeling very unheard. So um, it's just their tendency is to be quick and think quick. Um, they make decisions and take action without notifying other people. So they might be like, oh yeah, by the way, we're going away for the weekend. I've already packed the car, go grab a tent and we're up. And the kids are just like, hang on a minute. What about everything? Um, yes. But they don't, they, they just like, they have it all under control. Of course they do. Strong natures, they've thought of everything. And okay. in their mind, there's nothing, nobody needs to worry about anything. The whole family just needs to trust them. But, um, it's still a little bit too fast for the family. Yeah, that reminds me of um, 
I have I have plenty of examples today. Good. My parents don't listen to this. It's like an expose on my parents. Um, yeah, when so when we go down to visit my mum and dad, my mum from listening to this, I'm gathered that my mum's a strong and my no, my mum's a social and my dad's a strong. Yeah. And I'm more sensitive and my husband's more structured. So we're kind of slow, take take our time kind of people. And my mum and dad will be talking about doing things and let's go do this, let's go do this. And then when they decide to go, it's gone. Yeah. And they're halfway down the street before we even found our stuff and got ready and comes like, what are you doing? And I'm going, why didn't you wait? Oh, we were ready. We thought you were ready. And that was it. They just went without thinking and we still needed time to. It's an awful feeling it's when weird. somebody's waiting for you, you know, they're yeah. ready to go and you, you're like, hang on a minute, where, where are we going? What do we, what do I need? What, what, whether it, what, it's, it's, it's just an awful feeling when someone's and standing there tapping panicked. their toe. You feel okay? panicked then because you're yeah, going, you oh, panicked. I'm so sorry. So a solution to this for strong natured parents, if they are, if they do find themselves telling their family to hurry up and get a move along, a good phrase is, I'm ready when you are. Yeah. This sends the family the message, we yeah, could leave at any point, but when you're ready to leave. Basically, I'm ready and waiting, but there's no rush. It just slows it down a bit. Mm. Ready when you are. I'll yeah. see you in the car. Or I'm, I can help you. What do you need help with so that we can move this along? So also a mistake that strong natured parents make is they rush through routines, in particularly the bed, bath, in a bed bath routine so i do have a video on my website about this so if you think this is you go and tap on that video it's called it's called dinner bed bath but it's basically about parents and, and we all do it um i remember doing it not because i like to move fast but because i liked i wanted the day to end i wanted to get to that point of the day where i could sit down and just have some time to myself so i found myself rushing through that time of the day Right. Um, which actually makes kids not want to go to bed and dig their heels in and they're much more irritable and slower if you rush them. So go and check out that, mm. that video. Um, a great example also is, is about a CEO who's running an organisation. Strong-natured adults make amazing leaders. But if you were the leader of an organisation and you did made all the decisions without collaborating with your committee members you wouldn't get their buy-in. They wouldn't be enthusiastic and they wouldn't work as hard. And it's the same for a family. If you're the leader of a family and you're a strong nature and you're a, a bit of a delegator and a commander, if you just slow down a little bit, see things from other people's perspective, get their, get their buy-in, motivate them by giving them jobs to do and appreciating them, you'll get a lot more, they, they will move a lot faster. They will kind of come up to your level of pace. Right. There's, there's, like, there's, a, there's a way to do it. Um, if, you, if you don't get your needs met as a strong-natured parent, which are forward movement, same as a strong-natured child, results, action, um, ticking off that to-do list, if you don't get that done during the day, you will come home to your family and feel like you need to get a reaction or you need to get stuff done or you need to kind of have that physical challenge. Um, so there may be some husbands or wives recognising this tendency in their spouse <laughs> and they might be able to say, hey, you know what, you need to go and um, shoot some hoops or get something done or get some physical forward movement or, um, you know what, you just need to go and tick a few things off your list because I can see that you're just irritable mm. um so that is the strong nature let's go on to the sensitive nature this is me this is this is amy she's a sensitive I am. you're going to be such a good mum when you have <laughs> or a pushover by the sounds of it <laughs> no i'm not going to let you be a pushover you're going to be like since awesome. a lot of Interesting enough, when parents are trying to decode their own nature, a lot of mums think they're sensitive because the sensitive nature is na the natural nurturer. Right. They naturally have a tendency to want to nurture, to like to be nurtured. They're the peacemakers. Um, they're the list makers. They're the, they put things in piles. They, they, um, 
They are amazing mums, I can tell you that much. And the sensitive natured mums, when they are trying to decide what nature they are, they always get it right. They always know straight away, oh, I'm a sensitive. And some of the other natures think, I'm a sensitive and I have to say, actually, you're not actually a sensitive. You think you should be a sensitive because you're a mum in that role. Yeah. But as a child, you were actually, you know, social and strong and that's who you need to be. So the sensitive natured mum um, is, she's the one that says, let me take care of that for you so you can be comfortable. And as I said, this is such a great quality that they have. And but what happens is they can do that too much and they put everyone else's needs first, which leads to them feeling unseen and unheard and then for, therefore resenting others. And I recently was coaching a nanny. I have a nanny mentor program um, and the nanny was a sensitive nature and she was doing everything around the house because she wanted to be seen to be the best nanny, but she also wanted the kids to be comfortable and she also didn't really mind doing it. She didn't mind staying late. She said, oh, I don't mind. That's fine. She honestly actually didn't mind, which is why she allowed it mm. and offered. Um, but she had this underlying resentment for her bosses. And when we, were, when we fleshed it all out, I said, it's actually that the children are very rude to you. They expect you to do a lot for them, which is not good for the kids. Um, and, and you resent your bosses, you feel unheard and unappreciated. And it's actually your fault because you haven't actually said, this is my boundary. Hey, I'm not going to stay late. I need to go mm. have my own life. Or how hey, stay late, but I'll, I'll need to invoice you. And so on and so forth. So you, it can, you can shoot yourself in the foot. You think you're doing a good thing. Yeah. How do you go about finding those boundaries? Because I know I've fallen into the same trap thinking about work back in the day when I used to work in retail and it was oh can you cover this shift so and so is called in sick can you do this can you do that and I'm going okay 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 and not being able to mm -hmm. say no and then just going I hate my job I hate my life oh that is a good question this is how you find your boundary imagine a cup a teacup on a saucer mm -hmm. that teacup needs to be full of tea and overflowing if you've got some overflowing in the saucer you can say yes Yes I, have. yes, I can help you. Yes, I can do that because I have some here overflowing. Right, so it's a different or, take on that. You can't pour from an empty cup. It's Absolutely. People, it's think I've got, full. people think I've got plenty in my cup I can give. That cup is your cup. That's for you. And if you want to be the best nanny, parent, coach, or whatever you can be, that cup needs to be full 99% of the time. Sometimes you will have to give out of that cup because we're all mums, but you know, you need to know when you're going to be able to fill that cup up. So say your cup's half full and they say, you know, can you work late tonight? We really need you. You say, you know what? I can, but I'm going to need the morning off. That's my boundary. Mm. Or maybe you can't take the morning off. Then you just have to say, you know what? I wish I could, but I really need to get some rest so I can be the best nanny parent I can be. So it's really important for sensitive natured parents to recognize this tendency to always say yes, because they want people to be happy with them and comfortable. Yeah. Thinking about um, what I think it was in the last podcast when you mentioned the chore charts, different kids can do different ages can do different yes. chores. Yep. Um, is that something that would be good for me to probably reference again? I'm just thinking when, when it's a work situation, a lot of mums listening might think, oh, yeah, if it's a work situation, I can step away. But if I'm a parent and it's a 24-7 job, how, how do you find that time to That is a great question. Cup? Yeah, you might be running on empty. Your cup is dry mm. and you have no way to re refill it. You're a single mum, you're a foster mum, you don't have help, all the kids are home. There are things that you can do um, in order to fill up that cup. So one of them is following a schedule. Now, in the timing of this recording, we're all in isolation. So an example, when you're all at home, and this could be the weekends as well, or school holidays, is to follow a routine. 
and the routine is structured so that everybody's working, homework, schoolwork, projects at the same time. Everybody's on their screens at the same time. Everybody's playing, laughing, giggling. And so the overall stress and, and need for that parent is, is less because everyone's doing the same thing. A family quiet time every day after lunch from about, you know, after lunch till two o'clock. I recommend that for every family, no matter what age. Everyone's in their own rooms or their own space by themselves. This gives parents a time to re refill, refill their cup. Um, and if parents are listening and they are on their own and they don't have support, find it. Find, make it a priority to find that support and have the courage to ask. Ask me if, if you need, if you're listening to this and you truly don't have anyone to come in and relieve you. Um, oh, I can help you. So a lot of sensitive people, there, there is this resentment and they kind of get into victim mode, these parents. It's not fair, I can't do it, I don't have anyone. That's your, that's the, that's the challenge of your nature is you can fall into that. Um, so just remind, remember what the needs are for your nature. Um, and in fact, I've just written an article about some different examples for each nature of what they can actually do that meets their needs. It's tailored to lockdown, but it's, it's still a good article. We'll put the link below. Um, and a sensitive mum needs, needs time alone to be nurtured. She needs a bath. She needs to have a quiet spot with a book. Um, so yeah, find, it's a really good question, Amy. Find mm. time to, to fill up your cup. Um, I know I have mums who come to my boot camp and my exercise programs simply for that reason as well. Something yeah, to get of away course. from. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not even about the, what they're trying to achieve. It's just like, this is just gives me time on my own. Yeah. I get to have meaningful interactions, sensitive nature, like, like that meaningful face-to-face -face interaction. They like the connection they have with you. They come to you because they know you, you know them. Yeah. It's that face-to-face it's that -face interaction. So important. So that's the sensitive nature. It's you, Amy. It now is. let's go into the structured natured parent. This parent is organized, analytical. This is the spreadsheet parent. This is the, I've got everything organized. Um, this is the perfectionist. This is the parent that needs to have everything just so most of the time. This is the parent that knows there is a right way to do everything. And that's the way that everyone should do it because it's the right way. <laughs> like, um, stacking the dishwasher. Yeah. My argument, I have a structured parent, and my argument is that water goes everywhere in there. Doesn't matter how it's stacked, water gets through yeah. Is this so the these... person who would kind of just go, oh, just let me do it? Yeah. Is it let me do person? it because I'll do it better. You'll never do it as good as me, and it needs to be done the right way. They've just got mm. this need to have things right. These are the yeah. these are the ones that have to do, abide by the law. And the, you know everything has to be done the right way. Yeah. So the problem they can get into is being overly critical. And if they have family members that are a little bit more relaxed and go with the flow, these family members can be really overwhelmed and they can start to feel like they, they can't really relax and be themselves in case they mm. leave their shoes behind or in case they do something or you know it's just like they can't they can't relax. Um, a lot of adults actually relate to the traditional parenting. Traditional parenting is very structured. Parents were very much, you know, structured. We, we sit down at school, we sit for hours, we do this. Um, and a lot of adults now tell me they never felt good enough in their parents' eyes and those parents were structured. Right. So you've got to be careful that your children don't feel like they're never good enough. They're never meeting your standard. They never quite get it right. There's always that one thing that they could have done better. It's actually, you know, it can be quite annoying. Um, mm. So an example I have is I, I went to visit a family and the father was a structured. And when I arrived, he, I can tell he was a structured. I could tell by the way he was standing, by the way he shook my hand. 
I could tell by his, his facial features. And he had four children and he lined them all up to greet me and shake my hand. And he actually thought I was there to like sort the children out. And um, I actually said to him, oh no, they can go. I'm, I'm actually here to, to work with you. I work with the parents. I don't, I don't actually need to see the kids. Like, oh, oh, okay then. He wanted all the facts. He wanted to know how it was, what I do and what I, I just knew he was a structured. It was so cool. And then we got halfway through the meeting and he said, I've got this huge challenge with my middle son. He's so messy all the time. Come, I'll show you his room. He took me down the hallway to show me this social child's room. The child was about six. Mm -hmm. And when I went into the room, I saw a bed that had been made by a six-year-old. And I, I saw it and thought, that's, that's wicked. We made a bed. That's cool. I mean, it was, yeah. wasn't amazing, but it was made. I saw a basket of clothes in the corner that did look a bit messy, but at least they were in the, in the basket. I saw lots of projects out. There was a craft project going on with some toilet rolls and sellotape. There was a Lego statue. Um, there was a lot of artwork that was displayed. But, you know, it was a kid's bedroom. And he said, see, this is, this is, a, this is a shambles. He never cleans it up. And so it was very interesting when I actually had to tell him that his standard of neatness is not the same as his child's standard of neatness and that he needed to respect that social nature children like to have things out and about. They like to see all their things. They've got a hundred projects going on at the once and they might work on that one and then they might work on that one. So I gave him some tips and I'll share them with you of, of what I said that he could do. Yeah. He could use my uh, technique I call a criticism sandwich. So if you do need to criticize somebody, you sandwich it between two compliments. So he could have walked in there and said, hey, you made your bed. Well done. I can see that you've stretched the blankets right to the corners. That, that's good. And look, your washing's all in the basket and there's nothing on the floor. I think that you could probably choose two of these projects and I'll help you finish them. We can pop the rest away for another day. But hey, you know what? You're doing well. So it's kind of like it's so much better received. You'll get so much more motivation. Then that child will then appreciate that and go, okay, yes. And then he might think about next time he's making his bed, how dad said, you've pulled the, you've pulled the covers right to the corners. Maybe I could do more pulling to the corners, you know, mm. just giving that little example. Um, and structured natured parents need to just have a little bit more flexibility and adaptability and, and tolerance for other natures and how they see things could be. Um, strong natured people don't tend to value tidying up all the time. They're, they're too busy. They've got things to do. They've got boxes to tick. They're out the door. They don't see value. I know a lot of strong natured parents that don't make the bed because they, they just don't see value in it. They're going to get in it soon. I'm too busy for that. <laughs> It's just different people have different tendencies. So three words that I would like structured natured parents who are listening to try and embrace is it's good enough. It's good enough. It's not perfect. It's yeah. good enough. So you can't expect the words. world from a six-year-old. But no. even a teenager. I was I, even, a te even worse from a teenager because yeah. we know about teenagers, but I was really impressed. And I, I could see that the six-year-old had tried his... I could see that he'd been sent to his room to tidy it up. I could yeah, see yeah. that. You could, it wasn't really a six-year-old's room. It was a six-year-old that was trying to. Yeah. yeah. But he's, he's, he's doing well. That family's doing really well now. He's actually lightened up heaps, this father. We, 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 we have a good old laugh together. And he, he, says when his, he said to me the other day, I just laugh now when my kids have tantrums because I can, I can see what you told me about them and um, I can see the humour in it. He had a, real, had a real problem with any sort of noise or tantrums. Wow. And, uh, really rewarding for me to hear that because I'm like, ah, I flipped your perspective on that. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting because I'm always thinking we've got a neighbour and their kids just all the time just hear them rah, 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 and then they're going what are you doing? Just no, just be quiet. <laughs> I'm like, oh. And I'm thinking that's annoying me. And I have a structured husband and he's probably going, just fizzing away. He hides in his office. So he doesn't have to hear it. <laughs> so 
So any of these tendencies do you recognise in your husband as a structured? The let me do it. Let me do it. I'm mm. not that I'm complaining. I will start dinner and he will quite happily take over. And I'm like, yeah. do you want me to do anything? Yep, stay out of the way. Okay, cool. <laughs> See, but that's your sensitive nature. You actually, yeah. You literally don't mind. You actually yeah. don't. You're just yeah. like, well, easier for me. Yeah. But you could throw a spanner in the works one day and say, hey, I'm cooking dinner and I'm going to cook it from start to end. And I, and I want to challenge you not to come in and try and make it better. Mm. The best example was Christmas dinner. I was going to cook Christmas dinner and I wrote a list and did all my timings and got everything. It took me ages to get everything written down right. And then I ended up sitting there and going, right, now you're doing this. And he did it all. Well, that's great too. Yeah. See how you work that. That is good. It but like, oh, sensitive yeah. natured people love to cook and they love to prepare. It's a way that they nurture their family. Yeah. So if, if it was, if there is a sensitive mum listening and she recognises, yeah, that happens to me too. She really needs to put a boundary in place there yeah. because... Sometimes it is nice to cook your own and go, I wanted to cook Christmas dinner. Yeah, I had this idea in my head, this plan. I wrote it out. I made the list. I did the shopping. <laughs> and now you've come in and today you're presenting it. It's like... Being the hero. Yeah. But no, it was good. They went, thank you, Amy or Nick. That was fine. I was like, you're welcome. And you mentioned your structured husband is actually not tidy. He isn't. And this was an interesting fact that structured people are all or nothing. The black or white, there's no gray either. Gray area. They're either really, really tidy all the time. Yep. Well, they just don't place that much value on tidying mm. up. They're all or nothing. Everything's either really, really organized, there's a place for everything, or not quite sure where to put anything, so nothing gets put away. Mm. It's kind of that. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. It is. <laughs> yeah, we could go down a whole rabbit hole with that, but it's not marriage counseling. I've only been married a month and a half, so we won't go down that. I think this is just as good as marriage counseling. You can understand. <laughs> and, here, and let's lead into my my takeaways for this yes, session. Yes, please if do. If you can just understand and observe your own tendencies, your own nature, if you learn about your own nature, through reading my book about the nature of children, you will learn your, who, what nature you are. But there's also plenty of other personality type things and quizzes and it's been around for centuries. Learn about your own preferences and your own tendencies and start to observe when they are showing up in your household? How are you getting the kids off to school? Are you rushing them? How are you um, helping them to do their homework? Where is, where is the, the tendencies of your nature showing up and are they adding value to your family and your parenting or are they doing you a disservice? Mm, it's so easy to let that nature just take over and trying to just balance it in how you present that nature and how you work with other people it's a work in progress it's not it is it, it is it, it takes it takes practice and you can't blame your nature either you shouldn't ever blame your nature and say oh well, i can't help it i can't help it you can always you can always um slow it down and, and think and change your response to, to to get a better outcome to get better motivation yeah. out of your children for your family to flow nicer to actually get more work done by actually noticing your, your tendencies yeah and i'm glad you said that don't don't blame your nature because i've had i've spoke to people oh for years and before i even knew about this just going oh well, that's the way i am so it's not going to change i'm not going to mm. do anything to change that's mm. just who i am and there's always something that can be done it's just being aware of what your nature is like and mm. learning to how to interact with people and how to learn and improve yourself and absolutely like as i mentioned my my gift is ideas i think that's why i'm such a good consultant because i have so many ideas i, I can solve any problem i've got an unlimited supply of ideas and if that doesn't work but another idea that we can try if that doesn't work but the, but i have really had to restrain myself when i get these ideas um and my best friend has been doing this thing to me lately where I say, oh, I've got this idea. I think I'm going to, actually, I said to her, you know what? I'm going to have a nanny academy. I'm going to start a nanny academy. I'm going to train nannies to do what I do so that there's yeah. more of us into the homes of New Zealand children. 
And she patted me on the shoulder and said, it's a great idea, Jess. Great idea. And it was like, oh, yeah, what, like, how can, I, how can I do that? I've got so yeah. many ideas. And it just reminded me, every time I get an idea, I, rem I remember when she patted me on the shoulder, that, that's a great idea. And so it's helpful to just acknowledge that that is a really great idea. Mm -hmm. I will have a nanny academy one day. It's a great idea. It just won't be tomorrow. It's just still an idea. We're going yeah. to put that in the, on the ideas page. And we're going to continue with the idea we started last week. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I would love to hear from any of your listeners that if, if there's any stories or ideas or anything has resonated, um, I would love to hear about it. I love hearing, hearing stories and um, examples of how these types of tendencies have shown up in different homes. And I will eventually be writing another book. It's an idea. It's on the shelf at the moment about parents. I've done the nature of children. I'm going to do the nature of parenting. And um, brilliant. I'd love, I love content, content for my book. So I'd love to hear from anybody. Yes. Well, this, I will share this in my community group and invite people to comment. Yeah. So they can comment in the group or they can comment on the um, YouTube or wherever they're listening to it. They can comment or they can just simply email you. I'll pop your email address in the show notes again. Absolutely great. Thanks, Amy. Fabulous. So that's it. That rounds up the common parenting mistakes that, yeah, I didn't realize how deep we could go and how deep we could still go. Mm, yeah. 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 I mean, every, we're, we're all doing it. We're all making every single one of these mistakes. It's just yeah. about being, becoming aware of it and going, yeah. Oh, I do that. That's me. I've done that before. I've done it before. And, and you, you will do it again. It's oh, just yes. the nature. It's the nature of parenting. It is the nature of parenting. We'll leave that there with that with that closing statement. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.